In this video, we're going to cover short answer question slides. Lately, I've been thinking about short answer questions because I've had a couple of questions from my viewers on YouTube related to how they can survey their learners uh, and their reactions to the training and their thoughts and feelings about this, that, and the other thing. And so I've been thinking about the best way to do that. Now, I've done this myself a number of different ways in the past, but I really haven't uh, explored uh, survey questions that often because there actually are a couple of shortcomings to them. Let me show you a little bit about short answer question slides that will help you understand this uh, issue. So here I've got just a basic project right here and I'm going to click on my slides icon here and add a question slide. We'll choose short answer and we'll start off with a graded question here. So I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to type something into the stem here. What street in New York City is known for live musical theater? Now short answer questions work off of matching what the learner types against what you identify as the correct answer. So I can click on this answer area here and I'm given an opportunity to put in all the correct possible entries. Broadway Street. I'm not going to worry about uh, uppercase or lowercase uh, letters, so I'm just going to leave case sensitive unchecked. But we're going to need some variations to this because Someone might type in Broadway Street, but they might also type in Broadway Street with the abbreviated form. And they may also type in Broadway Street, the abbreviated form with a period afterwards. And, you know, if you sit back and think about it for a while, you might come up with even more possible answers that could be the correct answer just written a little differently. This is why I don't like short answer questions because there is an opportunity for someone who clearly knows the correct answer to type in something that could get marked as incorrect. So I tend to avoid it for, for those reasons as well. Now, if we take a look at the quiz questions here, I just want to show you a couple of things. Now, just like any other question, you can assign points you can display correct or incomplete captions. You can have uh, your own failure messages and multiples of them if you wish to give them multiple attempts. And of course, you've got reporting. Now, this is important because uh, there is one way you can use short answers to survey your learners without necessarily impacting your score. But there is an issue with that, and I'm going to share that with you here. So I'm going to type in final quiz. And I'm just going to put an underscore there. So that this will be uh, identified in your LMS as a final quiz question. Let's go into our slides drop down again and select, in this case, also a question slide and choose short answer. So we're going to choose survey in this case here and click OK. And uh, in this case, we're going to use a different question. The question will be, what did you think about this e-learning course? And of course, we can input whatever we want. Now, when I select the field here, there's no opportunity to select the correct answer because in a survey, there is no correct answer. Uh, you'll see also, too, that there is an opportunity to report on this. So I'm going to call this uh, Level 1 Eval. And because this is going to be the first of a survey set, I'll call it 01. And so that's going to be what you're going to look for in your learning management system if you want to see what learners have provided here. Two problems with using a quiz question as a survey. Number one, Captivate thinks it's part of your quiz. So if I've had one question for a final quiz before, my short answer survey question is going to say question two of two in this case. 
Now to get rid of uh, the progress indicator on your quiz slides, we're just going to go into the edit drop down menu and go to preferences. Specifically, we're going to navigate to the quiz category and the settings subcategory. And then we're going to uncheck show progress so that the question two of two will disappear from our survey question. It also will disappear from our regular quiz question. And if it's important to include that, you can just create a text caption and pop that into position. Uh, the other thing too is that when we go to our quiz results slide, it's going to count as one of our correct questions. And it's also going to count as our uh, one of our total questions as well. So what I like to do is select the review area, go to the quiz panel, and make sure those two items are unchecked. And this way you can uh, not display that information, even though it will include those survey questions as part of the final quiz. I'm just going to do some alignment here to fix this up so that it looks proper. And we'll do the same thing with these elements here. So now let's test this out, but I'm going to preview this in a different way than I normally do. Normally I test all my e-learning courses using HTML5 in browser. Today I'm going to preview in SCORM Cloud because of course I want to see what information a learning management system collects about these two versions of short answer questions here. So let's preview in SCORM Cloud. Okay, so we've uploaded our course to SCORM Cloud. Let's take a look at it. So what street in New York City is known for live musical theater? It's just occurred to me, and, and again, this is going to determine whether you use short answer questions, uh, I think, in your own e-learning course. But I typed in three different versions of Broadway Street. But what happens if someone types just Broadway? Technically, that's a correct answer if you're not counting for super accuracy, but this is going to get marked as incorrect in this case here, but that's okay. We'll continue. And of course, now I'm at the point where I'm being surveyed for not part of the quiz, but instead part of what could be a level one evaluation. And I would say this is a great course or something like that. There is no right or wrong answer. It submits that. I got zero out of 10, I got 0%. And in this case, I didn't have an opportunity to retake the quiz. But uh, the important thing here is that if I exit from this course, we're going to get an opportunity to look at the quiz results. And that's what's important here. Let's see what the uh, SCORM cloud says about this course. So you can see here that all of the usual uh, course details and runtime data are available. We can see that uh, this is considered incomplete because I didn't pass the course. Um, I got zero out of 100. But this is what I'm interested down here. First of all, here is my final quiz uh, interaction ID. It goes on to give you the question itself. It's a fill in the blank. Correct responses could have been Broadway Street, Broadway Street, shortened and Broadway Street shortened with a, a period and I typed in Broadway. So this is good that of course this uh, this data is stored because of course if that student contested that question you could decide to override what the LMS says and give them their marks accordingly. Also too of course is our level one evaluation down here. You can see what the question is and we can see the learner response. So if the learner is going to write a paragraph uh, and submit it uh, about their feelings about the course or how the course impacted their feelings about a particular topic, this would be a great way to capture that data. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.